All right. Yeah. Obviously, we had a chance to visit about these two, but excited to to welcome uh, both Jamar and Demarco. Uh, Jamar's responsibilities uh, do want to clarify a little bit different than the release that we put out. Uh, he'll coach our outside linebackers and our and our defensive ends. Um, Calvin Thibodeau will remain as the the defensive line coach. Uh, as you guys know, we're we're very multiple in the front, so th those guys will. Certainly, be working together quite a bit. There'll be a, a few of our players that are pretty versatile that will that will have some crossover, some carryover between both coaches. But as Coach Grinch and I, one kind of looked at uh, the responsibilities of our coaching staff and looked at potential candidates. We knew this setup was something that we were interested in, and so uh, Jamar's experience certainly throughout his career and, and his knowledge of the game. In addition to how how great a job he's done recruiting, most recently as Arizona at Arizona State, you know, made that uh, really a pretty easy decision for us. So excited to kind of have the one-two punch there of, of both uh, Jamar and, and Calvin there on the defensive front, and really really excited about how well those two are going to work together. So uh, thrilled to welcome these two guys here. So you guys have Adam. Okay, first question on the right, Jenny Carlson. Hey, Jamar, Jenny Carlson with the Oklahoma. Um, you. Your success recruiting, like I just alluded to at Arizona State, three of the top 30 guys out of California you get last year. How do you, how, how have you had such success? What do you sort of attribute that to? And then how do you balance that with bringing guys in and developing? Because that's something you've done over your career as well. Um, I think the success, success comes from just building relationships with uh, coaches, players, and just being consistent in my behavior with the kids and always staying e even kill. And then even if they tell you no, right away, just kind of stay consistent and continuing to talk to them and just build relationships throughout the years. And it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So use these things last for about a year, year and a half, however long it goes, but you just got to stay consistent with the kids. And then when you get them in, you just got to build them up from day, from day one. That's what I thought I've always done pretty well and build them up from day one and uh, continue just to coach them, coach them every day. That's what I try to do. They go to the middle, Kerry Murdoch. DeMarco, when you gave up that broadcasting career, did you think in a year and a half you'd be a coach at Oklahoma ever? I didn't. I didn't, but um, it was definitely a dream of mine to obviously end up back here and be at this prestigious program and a place where it started for me, and I consider it home, even though I'm from Las Vegas, but this was um, a place that helped jumpstart me professionally and um, on and off the field. So just the people in this organization and having a chance to come back here and um, obviously learn and, and help, you know, compete for a lot of championships. You know, I was, I was very privileged to have that opportunity. Was it just you wanted to be closer to football than the broadcast? I mean, why you made that decision for, in the first place? Yeah, I did. You know, I, I enjoyed the broadcasting, and um, I knew at some point I wanted to get into coaching. Uh, that was my calling. I missed the game, and, um, you know, what better place to obviously be here. And, um, you know, when I retired, you know, broadcasting was a step. But, I, like I said, you know, coaching was, was somewhere in my future. I didn't know when or how, um, but I was able to be um, a coach with Coach Sumlin, the guy who was here with me, and he gave me that opportunity. So I'm very thankful for him, you know, and um, bringing me in. But um, I'm extremely excited to be here. You guys will love this. Actually, DeMarco doesn't know that I know this, but uh, after word broke that uh, – that we were going to be looking for a new running back, running back coach. I was actually in Dallas recruiting with Coach Gundy, and he showed me his phone, and DeMarco sent him a text with the eyeballs. So, <laughs> 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 yeah, so yeah, I thought uh, that was uh, <laughs> so that was a good good uh, good recruit for us there as well. <laughs> I did, I did. I saw, I saw, I saw the news, and um, yeah. at first I was shocked because I, I didn't know anything, but you know, um, I, I did send him the emoji eyes and. That's all I sent. <laughs> yeah. But um, I didn't know he showed you that. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those have been pretty good around here. Yeah. yeah. We'll stay in the middle, Eric Bailey. DeMarco, what was your immediate thought as soon as Oklahoma reached out to you? And uh, how much have you admired this offense from afar? Um, a lot. I've always paid attention to uh, Oklahoma ever since I left um, 12 years ago. And this is a, a place for me that, once again, I consider it home and a lot of familiar faces and people here. And that reasoning is because it's a family program and you don't stay around here for a long time if you're not doing the right things consistently. And um, when I first got the, the call and, you know, the opportunity to interview, I mean, I was extremely excited. 
um, nervous and um, but excited, you know, just for the opportunity to obviously go in there and interview and um, hopefully, you know, have a chance to, to you know impress those guys and, and, and go about it that way. But um, I'm extremely happy to be back and um, this is, you know, um, surreal. It's very surreal to be back and I'm excited. Okay, far right, Barry Trammell. Yeah, uh, for both of you, did you guys know each other? Well, before this came together, you shared a field together in November. <laughs> Went better for uh, for Jamar. But um, did you guys know each other at all? And uh, what? First day I walked in here, Demarco said, "Hey, I'm happy we're on the same team now." <laughs> yeah, so, my my backs didn't have a good success that game, so because of him. But yeah, I'm happy to obviously be with him now. Okay, uh, James Hill. Jamar, you coach with uh, under Herm Edwards, who's really a great guy and a great coach. Reading things about you, you guys were pretty close. So, how tough was it to leave him, and what was it about Oklahoma that got you away from a mentor like that? Um, first of all, I guess, I'm so thankful that Herm gave me the opportunity to come to Arizona State. Uh, you know, as I didn't want to go in there his office and talk to him, I kept delaying it and delaying it, and delaying it. And I was like, "You got to go talk to him." And Herm is like a, a grandfather, a father figure to everybody. So, I walked by. I was walking to his office, and his secretaries grabbed me and gave me a hug because everybody knew I was leaving. Then Herm was walking out of his office, and he gave me a big old hug. I was like, "Man, come on in here, let's talk." So that just gave me a, a sense of comfort. But uh, you know, I went there and talked talk to him. He was so excited for me. He said, "I'm happy for you and your family and Coach Riley and what we're doing here at Oklahoma. It's going to be a good uh, good deal for you." But uh, it was tough to talk to him, just because he's such a father figure to everybody. He's a great mentor. He's a great man, and uh, you got to listen more than you talk around him. Because you're gonna you're gonna forget some stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean. So he's just it was tough. And then you know it's it's Oklahoma, and the opportunity to work for Coach Riley, work for Alex Grinch, and the guy that I've had a great affinity for since uh, everything he's done at Washington State, and then stuff he did at Ohio State, and we almost crossed paths at Wyoming. He was walking out the door, I was walking in the door. So just hearing all that stuff about Alex, I was excited to be here. And just, you can't tell Oklahoma no. Okay. Second row middle, John Hoover. Yeah, Demarco, uh, welcome back. First of all. When you were playing, did you think post football career I want to be a coach? Was that part of your decision? And then as your career started winding down, whatever that was, were you ever thinking, man, if I could just get back to Oklahoma or something like that? Yeah, I always knew I wanted to be a coach at some point in my life when I was done playing. Um, I, I've had such a a great um, upbringing with family, friends, coaches that um, have helped me on and off the field, and I wouldn't be where I where I am now, especially from a lot of the coaches here. And um, it's always a point to me to, you know, what can I do to help young guys and young athletes pursue their goals? And um, and coaching, you know, what better way to do it, obviously, being here. And, and I just didn't know when or how I was going to get into the profession. And and when I got the call from Coach Sumlin a year ago, I was obviously excited and accepted it. And having the opportunity when the running back job opened up here, Sent the emoji eyes <laughs> to Gundy, and then um, you know I just you know felt that you know I just wanted to interview, and I didn't you know call anyone, ask them to do this or do that. Obviously, it's Coach Lincoln's decision, and I didn't want to influence him in any way or make a call. So um, you know that's I've always had it in my mind to be a coach. I just didn't know the timing, you know, aspect of it. When you uh, quick follow up, when you were. Um... Before you said when you got the call from Kevin, someone, was that a deal where you had let it known, put it out there, I want to be, I want to move into coaching because you had gotten rave reviews on television. Everybody thought, well, Demarco's future is obviously in television. Or did someone call you and say, come coach? No, me. no, I, I had, I hadn't put any fillers out there. Um, I was, you know, to be honest, I, 34, 35. Um, that's when I kind of wanted to go into the coaching route. Wanted to. Spent some time with my family, and after a year, my wife was ready for me to get out of the house. <laughs> but, um, you know, I didn't. I called one of the visit games, um, I think week five or week six, and that's kind of how we reconnected. But there was never any conversations about, hey, if you have a job or anything like that. I never, I was enjoying the TV with Fox, and um, when the opportunity presented itself, like I said, uh, with a guy that I knew, a guy that I trusted and knew that I can learn from, um, you know, I wanted to obviously take the opportunity to do that. Is it harder than you thought? It is, it is, you know, but it's fun and um, it's, it's a challenge, but, you know, that's what I'm used to. You know, my whole life, it's always been a competitive atmosphere and everything that I've done. And um, this is this is where you want to be. This is, you know, I know it's not easy. And, and you know, I'm excited about the process and excited to obviously learn and get better every single day. Right side, Tyler Palmatier. 
DeMarco, uh, you just kind of touched on this, but what, what was the most challenging part about going from playing the position to you know, talking about football to then coaching it and making adjustments on the field, things of that nature? Um, for me, honestly, it was the fact that I had no control when I was when they were on the field, you know, and um, I trusted my players, and obviously you give them all the tools, and they're very receptive. Um, but just the fact that you're on the sidelines, you really don't have, you know, the physical control over in that in that aspect. But um, it's been a very smooth and easy transition, to be honest, only because of the coaches' staff that I was a part of last year, and now coming to the staff and. You know, um, they, they've obviously been doing a lot longer than I have, but I, I think it marries with, you know, what I've been able to do and just learning and listening and taking notes, you know, from everyone, whether it's offensively, defensively, special teams wise. You know, I, I pride myself on watching everyone and learning, you know, good, bad, ugly, to whatever the case may be. You know, there's always something you can take from it. Do you have one experience specifically that stands out in terms of, that you felt was really eye opening on the coaching side of things? Um, I, I would say, honestly, just the kids, you know, how, how receptive and respectful they are. You know, um, nowadays things are a lot different. You know, when I was growing up and going through this process, it was about traditions and things of that nature. Now you move on and it's about uniforms and certain things of that nature. But, um, you know, I kind of wouldn't say I lost touch with the youth, but you hear certain things and you see how things are going. But, you know, just the recruiting aspect and, and the kids that we had on our team a year ago, even the kids now, I mean, they're extremely bright kids. They're very, they're they're very receptive, like I said. But um, I think that's and, and you know, all they want to do is learn and get better and compete. So you know, that, that's that's a, a great thing for me. The second row, Jason Kersey. Hey, Marco, um, does, does your success that you had in the NFL does that help in recruiting? And specifically, everybody knows how important Dallas is to OU's recruiting because of your success with the Cowboys. Does that open more doors for you? Does are kids more receptive to you because of your success in the NFL? To a certain degree. Um, obviously, you know, we know what my history was, but that's not something that I, I live on and, uh, and approach it that way. Um, I, I know there's a lot that goes into recruiting and getting to know the families and getting to know that player on a deeper level and emotional level that, that you have to connect with. So I, I think to a certain aspect, and, um, you know, that's not something that I talk about. That's not something that I, you know, put out there and say, hey, this is who I am, so you should give me an opportunity. You know, that's, that's to me, it's, a, it's sort of irrelevant. You know, it takes a lot deeper path and de a deeper emotional connection to get into it with these kids and their families. Well, why is that? Why do you view that as irrelevant? Um, I wouldn't say that maybe I used the wrong word, but um, yeah. I, I wouldn't, that's not a slam dunk to get you you know, in, into that relationship with that kid. You know, obviously they know, I know, and um, that's not that's not a recruiting pitch for me. Okay, second row on the Ryan Keegan right now. Lincoln, Jamar had no immediate connection to you or Alex. How how did he become a target for you guys, and what was it about his background that intrigued you? Um, his name got brought to me by a couple of a couple of people that I really trust in the business, as did a lot of other names, um, and. I just started researching him, and one, I found a guy that, that had success everywhere he's been. Um, and then when you look at what he's done recruiting-wise in the last few years, he was just simply looking at those two things. We said, all right, we, we at least got to talk to this guy. And I'd never never met Jamar, uh, you know, before he walked in the door to come, come sit down with Alex and I. And uh, some people just grab you. They do. And, uh, and, and his... He grabbed my attention quickly because he was just very, he said it in his answer, he, he's very confident and very kind of has a very focused um, approach to both recruiting and coaching and developing these kids. And uh, it's been tested through time. It's been tested at different universities under different u defensive coordinators. And, and then as I started talking to a lot of the coaches that he had worked for, the all the answers were the same. It was the same conversations every single time. So you, you love the consistency that he's had. So it was just, it was the right fit at the right time. And, and uh, you know, we know, you know how competitive, certainly the defensive line, defensive end, outside linebackers, I mean, those type of bodies, there's the least amount of them. They're the hardest to find and everybody wants them. And uh, so you, you got to, you got to be an elite recruiter. You got to be an elite developer of talent. And then as we got to know, you know, Jamar, his family, they just they fit in with with our culture here, our family atmosphere. It just it checked uh, it checked every single box. Hey, 
right side, Gary. Yeah. Hey, DeMarco, good to see you again. Um, I wanted to ask about Kale and uh, his influence on you in terms of coaching. Is there is there something that you have borrowed from him in terms of how he taught you that you now teach your your running backs? Yeah, honestly, um, there, there's a lot of similarities that that I took from him last year, my first year coaching. I mean, accountability is one, and and treating everyone the same, no matter if you're a walk on or a starter. And um, he's a guy that obviously played a pivotal part in, in my growth as a player and as a man off the field. Um, so he, he, he's he's obviously I, I've stayed in touch with him since I left, and um, tremendous amount of respect for who he is as a man, coach, and recruiter. Um, he, he does a great job in all three areas. And um, so there's a lot of drills, a lot of sayings, a lot of things that I do that's very similar to how he does it. And um, you know, it's, it, it's helped me throughout the course of my career playing and, and my first year coaching as well. Did you bounce the idea of becoming a coach off of him? I, I did. I, I did. Um, when I first got the call from Coach Sumlin, um, first person I called was um, Jason Whitten, who was a best friend of mine. And second person I called was Coach Stoops. Um, who's obviously a guy that I still keep in contact with. And, um, you know, just to hear their advice. And um, Gundy was also, you know, third or fourth person that I called. Obviously him having a relationship with Coach Sumlin and, and knowing the coaching, um, you know, atmosphere and, and the, the time and, and whatnot. So um, I've always stayed in, in touch with him, you know, good, bad, ugly. And, and he's always been a, a positive mentor for me and, and just kind of bouncing ideas and things off that, you know, I may need someone outside of my family to talk to about. Just a few more. Terry Murdoch. Lincoln, I'm just curious, when you go out to a hire, hire an assistant coach, how much does kind of your background play into what you're looking for and just that, you know, Ruffin gave you that chance and how much does that play into you? Look for guys that, you know, um, might be, you know, have some of the same qualities you had you know, want to be a coach? It's honestly a tough question to answer um, because I think every every hire is so different. Um, you know, I, I've, I've worked for guys. I, I've been lucky. The guys I've worked for in the past, I think, have all have always. I've always thought the best coaches, as far as hiring assistant coaches, they don't care a whole lot about what the outside thinks. They're not necessarily trying to win the press conference. They're not, they're just simply hire the best person to do the job at the place that they can, you know, and I learned that at first. I mean, I, I thought, you know, I thought that was always one of Mike's, uh, Mike Leach's strongest qualities. You know, he hired a bunch of no-name guys there that nobody had ever heard of. And, and uh, now it's, you know, littered with head coaches and coordinators all across the country. Um, I thought Ruffin did a great job of it as well. I always, and then you know, being here for a couple of, of Bob's hires or involved with a few when I got when I got here, I always appreciated how decisive he was. I mean, he he found his guy. He didn't waste a whole lot of time. That's always kind of been my feel. I mean, I've you know, I don't want to sit here and go through the number of guys I've interviewed for spots, you know, coaching spots in our staff since I've been here. But it's it's not it's not a whole lot. I mean, I think you you find the person and you, you lay out the qualities, and then and then I think. I think the last part for me is I've always placed such a strong value on, on staff chemistry and, and how how well you do your job, but also how well do you work with the other people. And uh, that's a big part of my field and interview process when I talk to other coaches that, that have worked with a, with a particular candidate. That's normally one of my first questions is how does he get along with everybody? How does he get along with the players, the coaches, the support staff? Um, because. I think that that part is so key, and we've been lucky. We've had a lot of great staff chemistry, and and uh, so it's 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 a fun process. I enjoy it because it's always exciting to, in any way that it transpires, it's always exciting to have a chance to bring in new people and people that you think can make you better. And I think these two guys make us better. Okay, far right, Jenny Carlson. Uh, yeah, Lincoln. It feels a little bit like a rewind to Bob's early days with the age of this staff yeah. to the increasingly young staff. No. I know you're going to miss Ruffin for a lot of reasons, but what, is, what does that do for a staff? What does that do for a program to have so many guys? I think your oldest is 47 yeah. on the staff. Like, what does that do for you to have so many young guys on the staff? Well, I think it's, I think it's great for a lot of reasons. I, I think, obviously, the recruiting, you know, right off the top. I mean, uh, I think the energy level. And then I think you – maybe referencing the previous question, I – 
if I do look for any characteristic that I felt like it has been important to, to, you know, any success that I've been a part of, I, I think guys that have that edge to continue to prove themselves. You know, I still, I still feel that way. Um, just like I did the first day I started coaching, I feel still like I, I still feel like I'm trying to prove myself every single day, and that I have to, and certainly look for guys that have that same edge about them and that same competitiveness, and and not guys, and not that an older coach doesn't have that, but I, you know I think some of the younger guys that we've hired, I think I think we share that, and uh, and just th that edge and that competitiveness every day, and you have to have that in this job from the way. From what it takes to recruit the great players, what it takes to develop the guys and, and uh, that you have here currently to give them support that they need, it, it takes a lot. And uh, so, um, I didn't go out saying we had to replace these two positions with two, you know, quote unquote, younger guys, but um, they were just the right fit and bring the right mentality to it. Okay, last question, Barry Trammell. Uh, yeah, Jamar, the, uh, you know, Lincoln paints a nice picture about the the progress of the Oklahoma defense. But defense in the Big 12 for several years has been a, a punching bag nationally. <clears throat> Were you aware of the perception of Big 12 and, and Oklahoma defense? And what can you do to sort of counter uh, that perception when you go on the recruiting trail? <laughs> you just got to work hard every day, honestly. You just got to work hard every day. And at some point, uh, we'll get better and everybody will, will get better. But I think you just got to work hard every, every day at recruiting and, you know, doing the little things on the field at practice. And, uh, you know, the, the selling point is coming here and working with Grinch and working with Coach Riley. I mean, Grinch just has a history of uh, getting defenses turned around. I mean, he had a top 10 defense at Washington State. So that just sells itself. Like at Washington State, you don't, you're not getting the same athletes that USC is getting and Oregon's getting and even Arizona State. But he had a top 10 defense. and. We're gonna we're, definitely we're gonna get there, and just I'm excited to work with Grant to work with Coach Coach Riley. Hopefully, I answered that question right for you. You did, you did great. Yeah, <laughs> you did great.